Hey there guys, how's it going? So Stranger Things Season 2 has dropped on Netflix on Friday. I watched it the day it came out. This is Saturday I'm filming this. I just had to. The second I could, I ran home, watched the whole thing, because I loved it. If you know me, I love the first season of Stranger Things. That's my favorite TV content. It's my favorite eight-hour movie. I absolutely adored everything about Stranger Things and worshipped it. So knowing Season 2 is coming out, I was hyped beyond hype. This thing, it, it almost was fighting a losing battle. Like, how can it possibly live up to the first season in my expectations of how much I love it, but I was still willing to give it a chance of being just as good, even though, it like, whether I want to or not, it's just I had high hopes because of how much I liked the first one. But is this cosplay disturbing anyone? I want it to be Dustin. Is it is it creeping you out? I I don't know. Should I get rid of it? I'm, I'm doing this for Halloween anyway, but I just thought I'd show you that I'm... I'm Dustin. I, I don't have, I have my, my teeth all came in, but so did his for season two, so it works out. Anyway, yeah, back to the show. We got our whole cast of returning characters. Winona Ryder, David Harbour, Finn Wolfhard, Gabe Matarazzo, Kale McLaughlin, Noah Schnapp, Millie Bobby Brown, Natalia Dyer, Charlie Heaton, Joe Keery. We also have the newcomers for this season, Sadie Sink. Paul Reiser, Dacre Montgomery, and one of the Goonies himself, Sean Astin. We got a big old cast, some all the people we love, and a couple of new really awesome people. And what happens in this show to be as vague as possible? I would not want to spoil this because I was I myself tried to avoid everything. I didn't watch any trailers. I tried to not even look at the poster promotional images. It was like just let it get put on Netflix. I'm gonna run home with my eyes covered in my ears, and I'm gonna start it and just go through the whole thing. And I did, and it was so satisfying, it felt so good. Oh! It's been a year after the events of the first season of Stranger Things. One year later, you know, uh, the town is still, like, they've had a cover-up of everything. Hawkins National Lab wasn't necessarily outed. So that whole upside-down Demogorgon business is just a thing of the past, except for poor Will Byers still having PTSD, is having flashes of being in the upside-down. It's like that world is looming into his life, especially since it's the anniversary of him going there and the whole horrible stuff that happened. And it seems like something from that dimension is after him and wants him. And then a lot of other stuff's going on. All of Will's other friends are dealing with stuff. Poor Mike is still dealing with the fallout of the loss of Eleven and her being gone in his life. And then Lucas and Dustin are involved in a love triangle with one of the new girls who comes to town, Max, played by Sadie Sink. And she moves there with her stepbrother, asshole, new town douchebag, bully, uh, played by Dacre Montgomery. Like, when Steve Harrington was the bully in the first scene, it seems like, oh, he's gonna be that one-dimensional asshole, but then he actually evolved and became a really likable character. This guy is that, and he just stays that way. He is the bully, asshole, douchebag, that they give him dimension of why he is that way, but he's not likable. He's just a human asshole. He's he's a different type of asshole than the demon monsters, but he's an asshole nonetheless. Joyce is looking after her son Will, still very concerned for his well-being. Hopper also very involved in that, wanting to look over things, be a good guy. His other development in the show, I'm going to be all hush-hush on, like how, what he's doing in the show for a little while. And then um, let's talk about Eleven very briefly to say she is in the show. I didn't know how. But they work her in, and I will say it's good to see more of her, but I'll wait until my spoiler review to really discuss her overall use in the show. This might sound stupid to people like, I saw the poster, I saw the trailer, I know this, but I'm just saying, I wouldn't want to ruin it for anyone, but there is some Eleven here, and it's good stuff. To be as blunt and vague about it as possible is to say that Eleven is back. We get more of Eleven. I was very happy about that. She was absolutely my favorite character in the show. It was like puppy dog love of like, oh my god, you're perfect, you're adorable, I feel so bad for you, I just want to hug you, but you're also a badass with telekinesis, so it's all good. So seeing her come back is wonderful, we get to explore more about her and what she goes throughout the show, I really appreciate. It felt like when they were using her at times, it felt like they brought her back and they're like, what do we, what do we, why do we have her here, what do we need to do with her, how are we going to use her? We'll do this. And as a diehard Eleven fan, I'm not disappointed with the use of her, but I felt like as a fan, it's like, give me a little fan service. There's some certain things I want to see with Eleven and other characters overall. And at times they really, they take their sweet ass time. This is nine episodes instead of eight, but still a sh more short show than most. And they wait a while to really give you what you want at times. 
but they do give us what we want more or less. We do get a lot of 11 in here, but it's like they pick and choose how and when to use her. At times feels a little bit scatterbrained, but overall I'm happy with it. Uh, again, I'm gonna do a spoiler review to dive deep into this because I wanna not ruin it for everyone. Jonathan, Nancy, and Steve are still sort of having a little bit of a love triangle. I'm appreciating that. I like where that goes. It's a lot of fun because it's actually kind of charming. Like I like Jonathan even if he's kind of a weird guy. And then Nancy is very likable here. She's always had like a friendship maybe as something for Jonathan. We were never sure, but she ended up going with Steve. And that's challenged in this and she has to explore how she really feels. So it's like, it, it is a romantic thing. She's doing other shit too, but we get to explore her motivations romantically, which I'm not at all disappointed by. It's like, I like that. I like this sort of teen drama romance. There's so many different love triangles going on. There's a lot of romance in this season. Everyone, almost, almost every story has some kind of love triangle or love story going on, and I don't mind that. And much like the first season, Nancy and Jonathan are out investigating and kind of uncovering part of the mystery and conspiracy that's going on surrounding the story. And then Steve, like, that guy was the magic surprise of season one, where he's just like, yeah, I'm kind of a douchebag bully, and I become super likable and relatable. And I really cared about him in this show and where things went because him and the new douchebag, the Red Ranger, like he, they kind of clash heads and go up against each other He's because he's a dick, so he's going to fuck with Steve. And it's like, poor Steve, give the guy a break. He's got beautiful hair. Oh, and to jump back to Joyce because I forgot about this. So she's looking after Will, very concerned about him, and also she's dating someone. Sean Astin plays her new boyfriend in the show, Bob, and he's a really sweet, nice guy. So we got Sean Astin from The Goonies, and we also got Paul Reiser as the new Hawkins scientist head guy in charge of the Hawkins National Lab, that guy. And I, I will say to his credit and the show overall, I was very worried like, oh, it's gonna, like I was thinking of like his character from Aliens and I'm like, that's really clever and it is, but where they go with his character, I really appreciate in terms of they're not gonna do the same things as they might have done with Matthew Modine. It's definitely a different character and I appreciate that a lot because they're not afraid to make him likable or at least seem like a human being. And Noah Schnapp as Will Byers really is the standout of the whole season because he he was good as Will in the first season but he was like very underused because he was off lost in the upside down and just he was the driving force of we have to go rescue him. And this because the problems are different now the problems have followed with him on are with him in their human world he gets to be a part of the group overall and part of the whole and he's still like dealing with a lot of issues and becomes a standout because of it. The kid is just insane in this show. He is really good. He gets put through the ringer. The emotional and physical torture that this kid gets put through is insane and he is up to the challenge. He's an amazing actor. He is so good. The kid really stands out above the rest of the kids who are all really great and wonderful, but he is fantastic. I think he's even better than Millie Bobby Brown as Eleven in that same song because I loved her so much in that first season and this one, maybe it also has to do with what they're doing with her. She doesn't get the same role to play. It's maybe less interesting. Even though it's good, they're expanding and all this and that with all the characters, but Eleven is less interesting. Poor Will, like they're expanding on him and giving him so much more to do and he's crushing it. And I could sit here all day talking about every different story, the intricacies of where the characters get taken and how I like or dislike certain things, pretty much all of it is like. But let's just save that for a spoiler video. But let's talk about the show. What are they doing better or worse, different? How is it? Because the show, it feels different than the first season in a good way because things are different. You know, it's a year later, the kids are a little bit older, their stories are a little bit different. All the romance going around, all the boys are starting to more or less feel romantic feelings. Dustin's like, I, I might want a girlfriend now, guys. I've got all my teeth in, so come on. And it feels the same in setting and tone. It's still that great 80s, so many references, Easter eggs, throwbacks. They got an even bigger budget so they can have even more 80s music throughout. That's a lot of fun. But then the actual way the show flows, the first season was like magic. It was lightning in a bottle. They could never recreate that. It would be near impossible. It was so much of a surprise, like out of nowhere, and it's the most amazing thing ever. This doesn't quite have that. The driving force of season one of Will Byers being missing and having to find him and the Demogorgon is out there killing people, all this mystery, that was so good. And this is different. We got Will back, but like he's having PTSD of everything. And there is a mystery, there's stuff happening, there's like rot that is appearing in places, pumpkin patches are rotting to the ground. 
like weird stuff's happening again involving the lab we're exploring more of the upside down we're expanding a lot of characters so it's less of monster scares of like people getting killed and like the urgency is a little bit missing in terms of just developing and exploring characters more we're getting to know them even more and take them in new interesting directions it took a couple episodes even i was i was thinking about that too i was watching and the first three episodes are like this is really good but this is different than the first show that show was super engaging and binge worthy and not that this one isn't but they're taking their time like we know we're good let's take some time and just explore the characters get to know them settle into things we're stranger things we know what we're doing and so it's just a different feel it's not the same but it's not bad it, it is kind of like alien to aliens where the genre and the tone and the feel of everything becomes a little bit different but it's still more or less a similar scenario with bigger stakes because overall the show is a little bit slower than it was the first time around but when they get to where they got to go, they've got a bigger budget. So when they need to deliver on what they got to do, when they get around to like, let's do some crazy stuff or let's really deliver on the promise of more upside down or monsters or this or that, whatever they want to do, they go for it. And because they got a bigger budget, the effects look better. The Demogorgon in season one was the only disappointment. I'm like, that does not look good. And here it's, you know, it's still a Netflix TV budget, but it looks a lot better. So when they got to do crazy effects, they are more believable this time and they do crazier stuff with it. It's a lot of delayed gratification at times because really there's a few things where it's like give me the fan service, give me the gratification of a certain like a storyline I want to see be continued or concluded or whatever. Let me see more of it. And they take their time a lot where they really delay it till the later episodes. It's like just do it. But when they do it, it feels so good. There are certain scenes that it's like when they happen, it's like, were we doing this? And I just like curl up like a little fucking five-year-old girl, like, oh my god, yes. Like just super excited. It was it was it would have been embarrassing, but I was alone in my room, so who could judge me? And that's the thing about the show. They still they know what they're doing, they know how to do something awesome, and they're gonna do it a lot. So they might take their time. But they know how to get you and they're like, ready? Ready? Oh, we got you. And it feels so good. It's just they know how to deliver when they need to. And they do a lot. I would give Stranger Things Season 2 an A. Not quite the A plus holy grail that is the first season. But it's still almost as good. It's on the same level. It's just I got a few gripes about this that I didn't have with the first season. Could have did a few things better. Some of it I can't really address without spoiling everything. And all the spoilers I just want to do in a separate video for like a fucking hour. I don't know how long it'll take. That, ooh. But yeah, I did love this season, just not as much. But it's still so much. I appreciate it. The story's different. They're going for different things. I appreciate that. I like it. All the new characters, all the returning characters, very happy. The stories, the new take, the new thing they're doing. It's not a Demogorgon running around. They're going for a new thing here. I like it. It's cool and interesting. They weren't afraid to wrap up certain storylines and go for an actual closure. Here or there are a few things. A lot of fan service satisfying moments that I've been waiting for and we get them. So I will do that spoiler review so I can talk about all the awesome stuff that I don't want to ruin for you guys. I'm going to binge through the show a couple more times. Like season one I was obsessed with. I actually had like issues letting go with the show which is why I kept binging through it like three or four more times. I didn't want to stop watching. I didn't want to let those characters go. There was like, I needed closure on certain things, like, I can't, I, I actually, it was like grieving almost, like, I can't let go of you. This one, the way they end it, makes me comfortable to say, I will see you in a year and things are probably going to be okay, in a, in a good way, where I'm not dying because it's over already. But I will watch it more because I like it and it's quality TV. So yeah, comment below, tell me your thoughts on Stranger Things Season 2. This video was way too long, maybe I can edit and make it shorter, but that's just how it is. I can't imagine the spoiler review will be any shorter, it'll only be longer probably. Thanks for watching, I'll see you guys later.